listening to the other live feed as we are ready to go. All right, welcome back here to Brevard. You want to go get the umbrella? All right, I'm just asking because in case it gets hot and you can't see. All right, welcome back here to Brevard Sports Network as uh, the new home plate managers or uh, umpires gather around the manager for Bartow. Uh, the new home plate umpires are going to be Chuck Birdwell, uh, behind the dish, Rich Adam at first base and Chuck Weaver at third base. Just to take you through uh, what happened yesterday uh, in the first half inning, Nadia English led off. She struck out. Uh, Allie Turner batted second. She struck out. And then Kyla Berry got into a pitch pretty good as uh, she it just seemed to hit the wind and die. It definitely was destined for the gap. Center fielder made a nice play on it as well and again i i just can't stress enough the outstanding pitching matchup you are going to see here this morning here at barto now barto is uh and the other thing i want to say before this game gets started today is good luck to the ogali commodores uh, both melbourne girls softball and ogali baseball are going up against perennial powerhouses in the sport you know barto's a perennial powerhouse in softball uh, what are they? Uh, eight-time state champs, uh, 97, 02, 04, 05, 06, um, 00, 03, national champs in 2003. Uh, and then O'Galley today is going up against Jesuit, Tampa Jesuit, five, five-time five state champs, I believe, last championship won in 2019. But the one thing that both of these teams uh, possess, and they're similar in a lot of ways in that, uh, they're fiery. They, you know, they play the sport, you know, a non-contact sport. They have the mentality of that of players that play contact sports, if you will. And, you know, look, back in 2014, Melbourne was under very much this same scenario against Lakewood Ranch. They came over to play a regional final against Lakewood Ranch. Lakewood Ranch kind of ran them through the gamut all Friday with the weather. Eventually calling the game late in the day. Made Melbourne come back Saturday morning. And lo and behold, the Bulldogs were off and running to the Final Four. So let's hope that that outcome is what happens here today as Melbourne takes the field. And we are ready to resume action. We started we started our trek over here today about 7 o'clock this morning. And I am happy to report it was clear sailing, except for a little incident on 417. As uh, there you see, once again, right now, let's go ahead and take you around the Melbourne infield as we get set to get started. Once again, on the bump, or I'm sorry, in the circle, is Jazzy Frantic. Her battery mate behind the plate is Alicia Thompson uh, over at first base is I believe Alyssa Arnold is that yeah that's going to be Alyssa Arnold over at first base and DP for uh Alyssa is going to be Kyla Berry now back today with the team the one blessing that Melbourne has is that Sophia Valcourt graduated last night but she is here today, so I would imagine that Sophia at some point, and I would imagine very quickly, will resume her normal duties at first base. Over at second base is going to be Bailey Holland, the freshman. At shortstop is going to be junior Nadia English. And down at third base in her normal position is Allie Turner. From left to right in the outfield, it's going to be Addison Berry in left, Nevaeh Loveridge in center, and Haley Turner in right field so we are set to go here on a humid but cool morning thanks to cloud cover and up first for barto is going to be mackenzie gibson gibson comes in for barto batting 279 Francic this year without a loss. I'm sorry, actually she has one loss. 
And she starts off with a ball. Francic this year is 16-1. and one. In 105 and two-thirds innings pitched, Jazzy has 211 strikeouts. Her ERA is 0.20. And there is strike one from Jazzy to the leadoff hitter, Mackenzie Gibson. Frantic, of course, has uh, split it out on the mound this year with Kyla Berry. Allie Turner way in at third base, expecting a slap or a bunt. There's the pitch just off the outside corner somewhere. Ball two, two and one is the count to Gibson. The on-deck hitter is Shayla Narcissi. Jazzy rocks and fires. All right, looks like we got a clipboard strike zone today. And it is three and one to Mackenzie Gibson. That's either a good eye or a small strike zone or a combination of both. The all speed pitch is strike two. For those of you wondering, O'Galley plays at 1 o'clock today against Tampa Jesuit. You can catch that game on the NFHS network. Francis 3-2, off speed, high, ball four, good eye by Gibson, and that'll bring up the number two hitter, Sheila Narcissi. Narcissi this year is a 3-10 hitter. She's got a triple, two doubles, and 12 RBIs. So the leadoff hitter is aboard and I think you can see kind of see Jazzy out there just kind of like you know with her hand down by her side with her hand coming up and I think she's kind of wondering where those that second and that third pitch was and quite honestly so am I <laughs> it is 10 o'clock in the morning so I'll give everybody the benefit of the doubt here now this young lady's last name says Jackson on the back of her shirt so um that's not the lineup I have from yesterday. And if this is Jackson and it's number two, well, no, that's right. Okay. Maybe that's just her nickname. So this is indeed Sheila Narcissi. She's the center fielder. Oh, and one. She squares the bunt, pops it up. And nice play. You won't be, I don't know if you could see it, but Allie Turner came flying in. We got a weird angle here. Allie Turner came flying in. To make the the uh, catch and the first out, and this is going to bring up Caitlin Oxley, and this is the do it all sophomore for Barto. Uh, not only is she twenty and zero uh, on the mound this year, but she's batting four seventy four with uh, a home run, two triples, ten doubles, and twenty RBIs. Most of that leads Barto, Francic to Oxley. That'll be a strike at the knees. Oh, and one. Now we're rolling with the strike zone. Frantic right back in the circle. One out here. That'll be high for a ball. One and one. Vieira played Bartow very, very tough here last week under similar circumstances with delays and Things of that nature. They lost six to two. No score here. Bottom one. Pitch. Oxley fouls that straight back. Whew. Bounce right over the car. Bartow's been playing softball since 1986. How story of a program is this? Only twice since 1986 have they lost more than nine games in and in both of those seasons, it was just 10. Nice pitch by Francic, and she sits Oxley down for the second out here in the bottom of the first. This will bring up Morgan Grubb. Morgan's a power hitter, make no mistake about it. Morgan comes in with four home runs on the year and 26 RBIs. Francic to Grubb. 
The off-speed pitch is strike one. Grubb was looking to take that one up to 417. And it's nothing in one. Strike two. So Francic, if you're walking the first batter, has bounced back quite nice, quite nicely here. And he's quickly ahead of the power hitting Grub. I don't think Jash is going to waste any time with her, or at least try not to. The pitch, strike three, and that'll end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One walk, one left. We head to the top of inning number two, and there's no score between the Yellow Jackets and the Bulldogs. So Francic with matching Oxley's first inning performance from yesterday with two strikeouts to start, and Caitlin steps back in, and we'll get you up to date on Caitlin here as well. We told you about her yesterday. Her numbers are just as eye-popping as those of Francis. Um, especially you look, you look at what uh, she has done this year, like Francis, like Oxley. Big reason why both teams are playing in this game. Oxley this season, 20-0. and She's thrown six no-hitters in one perfect game this year. In 124 and a third innings pitch this year, Caitlin now has 303 strikeouts. She's not allowed a home run all year. One triple, one double. She's given up just 20 hits and surrendered three runs all year. None of them, none of them have been earned. She's allowed just 15 walks, and opponents are batting a paltry 0.51 against her. But, look, Melbourne this year, it was the one area of concern we had at times with the team was the way they were hitting the ball. But their schedule was very tough this year, and they saw some of the best arms in the state. Both of these teams are about identical when it comes to team batting averages and things like that. So, I mean, they are within points of one another, and that's because they also play a similar type of schedule to the one that Melbourne played uh, this year. But uh, leading coming up here for the Melbourne Bulldogs is going to be Alicia Thompson, Bailey Holland, and Jazzy Francic. Dan Adele will be at first, and David Kint or third, and David Kintai will be over at first base here. Grubb is at first. Mathis is at second. Julia Hedder is at short behind the plate is Mackenzie Gibson from left to right. It's Kendall Sal, Shayla Narcissi, and Leah Quartermain out in right field. As Alicia Thompson steps in, the sophomore power hitting catcher looks at strike one from Oxley. Thompson this year, 377. Yeah, nine home runs on the year. 23 RBIs, three, two doubles, and two triples. The 0-1, Thompson looks at a ball outside. One and one. One ball, one stri strike to Thompson. I need you to check on that periodically. Swung on and missed. That's ball two, but Thompson liked the pitch. And as a power hitter, I don't blame her. Right there at the eye, shoulder high. You want to give that a ride. They also have the pickup truck brigade brigade beyond the outfield. High ball two, and the count is even up. 2-2. Two, two. Second straight year, we've brought you a regional championship from a city over in this neck of the woods. Last year, it was Vieira that won. The 2-2, two, two, strike three, Oxley with her third strike out of the game, and that'll bring up the number five hitter for the Bulldogs. And Bailey Holland, the freshman. Holland steps in. I'd like to say congratulations to the Melbourne Bulldogs baseball team. Inside for a ball on an outstanding season. They fell to pace yesterday 2-1. to one. 
I know Galley will take their crack at trying to become the swung on and missed strike one. Brevard County is playing in their 19th baseball state championship game today. We have had uh, five programs win eight titles. O'Galley looking to become the sixth program to win a ninth all time. The county is eight and ten in state championship final play. So good luck to Bobby Collins and the Commodores today at one o'clock. Two balls and a strike to Holland. Jazzy Francic on deck. And we apologize if at any point in time the signal seems a little palsy or whatever. Swung on and missed, and the count is even up at 2-2. That is because we are virtually in the middle of nowhere. It's like they dropped Bartow in the middle of two highways and built some cell phone towers. The 2-2 high, ball three, good eye by Holland. Oxley, and oh, rung her up. Look, wow, okay. I'd have to ask where that was. That'll bring up Francic, and not only does Francic deal it up inside the circle, but she swings a pretty mean bat too. Jazzy batting 333 this year. Two doubles, nine RBIs. The pitch from Oxley, strike one. Look, a, a, the reputation of these pitchers precedes them. These umpires know who these pitchers are. And so, obviously, the respect is built in. And if anything is close, you're going to have to put the, try to put the bat on the ball. My issue was that. There was I don't know that was all that close. <laughs> oh, and two. Say good morning to everyone watching here on BSN. Ball one. Chuck Birdwell, Rich Adam, and Chuck Weaver, your umpires. Oxley now on a one-two here. Strike three, and that'll end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left as... Oxley strikes out the side. We head to the bottom of inning number two. No score between the Yellow Jackets and the Bulldogs. All right, welcome back here to, this is just a gorgeous softball facility, gorgeous softball facility, eight-time national champs as Balin Gomez steps in. Gomez this season.
a 343 hitter. I want to pay. I want to. Uh, the one thing I'm going to keep my eye on today, and it's because of the puddles that were on the field yesterday. And there's a soft liner hauled in by. Don't be missing nothing, man. A soft liner caught by Nadia English. I know it's early, my man, but. Back to what I was talking about as uh, Julia Hedder steps in. With all the water on the field yesterday, if you and we'll show you after this batter here, in front of that pitcher's mound is a mess, an absolute mess. The rest of the field's in great shape considering the amount of water it took yesterday. Coaching staffs and the grounds crew did a terrific job here. But that's the most important position on the field. And that's fouled back to the screen, and it's quickly 0 and 2. And you can kind of see Jazzy dancing around a little bit, and she's going to be throwing dirt on it. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk, We'll zoom in on it here coming up. It is, uh, it is not – there's a hole. Looks like a little, little, little hole up there. Pitch. Yeah, there is. I just saw her step in it. You can actually see her foot disappear down there. And I noticed that yesterday, and I was curious to see how or if it would recover. One and two, one out. Nice job by Alicia Thompson to swing. Uh, hold on to that. Third strike, and that's two outs now. So I, I want you to just to stay right here, zoomed in on that pitch, because I want to see, I want everybody to see how her foot disappears. I want everybody to see how her foot disappears in that, if they can. Yep, third baseman moves in. You won't be able to see. Go ahead and just back it up. Oh, there's a difference. There certainly is a difference. Pitch. Foul back to the screen. No score here. Top two. Bottom two. Sorry, bottom two. And we knew what this would be. A duo between two sophomore sensations in that circle. And it has not disappointed to start. The 0-2 with two outs. Just misses on the outside corner. One and two. Good waste pitch by Jazzy. One and two. Strike three, and that'll end the inning. Francic on fire as well to start here. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We head to the top of the third. No score. Yeah, and, and you're going to notice, I'm going I'm to point out something to you too here in just a second. I want to show you Caitlin Oxley here. Yeah, you can see it. it it's it, it's the it's the, the 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 hop. 
I, Kyle Berry was called on that a ton. Was she not? How, and that game that you did, right? How many times did they call that on Kyla? Seriously. Okay, yeah, seven or eight times Kyla got that called on her. So she's made it through two so far, and we haven't, and nobody said anything about it yet. So keep your eyes on that. Yeah, so let's, I mean, look, you, 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 I, you know, you're not making, I'm not making built-in excuses, but fair's got to be fair. And the answer to that question, there's a ground ball to the second baseman for an out. And the answer, I think we got a question here. Uh, no, John, that, and that's that's exactly my point I'm trying to make. Is the Bartow pitcher allowed to jump and leave the ground and not slide back foot? No. And that's what we're talking about was called against Kyla. So just just wouldn't be doing my job as a member of the media to point these things out. That's high for a ball. As this is Kyla Barry. Crow hopping, thank you. I couldn't remember what it was. Thank you very much. Yeah, she's, she's, she's definitely crow hopping. Yeah, no doubt. One and one. No, she's got a slide. Hi. And I and I and I I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Dan Adele just said something to the third base umpire about it. Zoom in on on her pitching, so everybody can see what I'm talking about. Just leave it there for a pitch. That's strike three, two outs. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Great, I mean, she's a great pitcher. There you go, you can't do that. Down the line, that's a fair ball. Sorry about that, just wanted to show you that, but that's a base hit. And the Bulldogs have their first hit of the game. It's a two out base hit by Nevaeh Loveridge. And we go back to the top of the order. Check that. Yeah, that's 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 Nevaeh. As we go, Haley Turner, the number nine hitter. So, a one-out single. What's wrong? Okay. Haley Turner, a lefty, now facing Oxley, the righty pitch. As she fouls that off, as the third baseman. Nice piece of hitting by Nevaeh there. That ball stayed just inside the bag. And that ball fell back. And, and then when she does that, that front foot plants, and you see the mound and the hole that that's creating up front. Swung on and missed for strike three. That's a good pitch. Two outs and back to the top of the lineup in Nadia English. Nadia 0 for 1. She was one of the three that started off yesterday. That'll be a strike. Strike 1. 0 and 1. Strike two. Oh, 
0-2 here. Runner at first. The first hit of the game by either team, delivered by Nevaeh Loveridge. Pitch. High. And you said Kyla had that caught on her how many? About seven or eight times. One and two here, top of the third. No score between the Jackets and the Bulldogs. Pitch, strike three as English goes down for the second time in the game. That'll end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We head to the bottom of the third. No score. You know, Kayla made a very good point there. On two strikes, you, you got to get that bat off the shoulders and protect. You got to protect. As we head to the bottom of the third, both pitchers doing exactly what we thought they would do here today. So far, seven strikeouts for Oxley, three for Francic as Leah Quartermain steps in. Quartermain, a 250 hitter this year. And we'll see Francic go to work here in the bottom of the third. Strike one. It's going to be Quartermain, Peyton Mathis, and back to the top of the lineup with Mackenzie Gibson for Bartow. Pitch. That'll be a ball high, one and one. The off-speed pitch is fouled straight back. And Francic, as she has been for eight of the nine hitters today, seven of the eight hitters today, in front, one and two. Aside from the one walk. She's been out in front of everybody else. No score here between the Jackets and the Dogs here. Congratulations to all our 2022 graduates. Francic's one, two. Strike three called. Is he in a way? Okay. Peyton Mathis steps in. Mathis this year, a 278 hitter. Arnold Holland. English and Turner from first to third. Thompson behind the dish outside for a ball. From left to right, it is Barry, Loveridge, and Turner. And, of course, Jazzy in the circle. Nice off-speed pitch. And it's one and one. One out here. 
you knew this game would move fast. You got two pitchers out there with combined 500 strikeouts this season. Just misses high. Two and one. Say good morning to everyone watching. How many people we got? Oh, my goodness. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Claremont, the winner, advances to the final four in Claremont. Jazzy will even it up at 2 2 here. That uh, off speed changeup is working like a charm for the sophomore today. The key is knowing when to throw that in softball, and she is definitely picking her spots right on time here this morning. Two balls and two strikes from Francic. Fouled back. As Peyton Mathis. Gets another swing here. A jazzy winds, kicks, and fires. Change up again. And I'll tell you what, that's a nice at bat there by the number nine hitter doing her best Bee Gees impression. Staying alive. See if it translates to anything. 2-2. Two, two. The third one from Francic. <laughs> Not that time. Strike three. Two outs. Nice job by Mathis, though, to battle. But even a better job by Francic to keep throwing strikes. That's the fifth for Jazzy. And back to the top of the lineup we go with Mackenzie Grubb. Grubb, her last time up. I believe she walked. No, Gibson, Gibson, Mackenzie Gibson, Mackenzie Gibson. She walked her last time up. Pitch high, two and one. Actually, one and one, sorry. One ball, one strike. Popped up, playable, but it trip. And hauling it in is Allie Turner just up against the dugout. I mean, she stayed with that beautifully for the third and final out. So that'll end the third inning. So far, one hit in the game. It belongs to the Bulldogs. We head to the top of the fourth. No score. Allie Turner steps up, 
as we go to the top of the fourth inning here. And as I see David Kintai over talking to the first base head coach or the first base umpire, I can only imagine again, and, and I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but I can only imagine the conversations have to revolve around the crow hopping. Swung on and missed for strike one. Oh, and one. And that one just a bit high. One ball and one strike. And Swung on and missed. Strike two. And I think the. Uh, hi, two and two. Three and two. Turner's worked the count full here. And right now, Oxley seems to be having a problem or an issue with the hole in the front of the circle there that, ironically, she's created. Throwing straight heat, though. Three and two. From the sophomore sensation, and she battles to get Allie Turner. Nice at bat by Allie, but it results in her second strikeout of the game. And that'll bring up Kyla Berry. Now, Kyla's last pitch up, she got into one pretty good. Kyla launched it to the center fielder, and it looked like it was going in the gap. The wind knocked it down, and Kyla's on that one too. The wind knocked it down, and uh, Narcissi was able to track it down. But she got a good piece of it. This was yesterday, and today the wind is blowing straight in. So, Barry behind after the foul tip. Nothing in one. No score between the Jackets and the Bulldogs. The winner will advance to the 6A Final Four at Claremont. Pitch. And that one back to the screen as well. And it's two and one. So, Oxley this inning has launched two to the backstop, which is uncharacteristic of her. Swung on and missed. One ball, one strike, one ball, two strikes. Ball is fouled back and out of play as Barry stays alive here in the top of the fourth. Rolling, rolling, rolling. This old Chuck Wagon's rolling right along here this morning. Already in the top of the fourth, the pitch. <laughs> That's a beautiful change up. And that is out number two. Alicia Thompson steps in. The ninth strikeout of the day for Oxley. That'll be a strike. 0 and 1. Alicia with nine home runs this year. I thought she had 10. But I guess it's nine. Strike two. 
And quickly, Thompson is in an 0-2 hole here and has the battle. Strike three. Oxley strikes out the side again. We head to the bottom of the fourth. No score between the Jackets and the Bulldogs. Two, three, and four for the Jackets here as we head to the bottom of inning number four. No score between the two best in this region. As Shea Shea Narcisse steps in. Narcisse her last time up. I'm going to take a wild guess here and say she struck out. Actually, she popped out to the catcher. Right? Yep. Right, yeah. Popped out to Alicia Thompson her last time up. Francic. And there is an unable to dig it out there. That was a – the ball just, like, topped and died. First pitch swinging. English got it over in time. Unfortunately, Alyssa Arnold couldn't dig it out. That that And that's a difficult – I mean, in front of these bases, the ball's just going to stop. It's not going to bounce because of the mud. So, I'm going to give that – well, that's got to be an error. So, Shea Shea reaches on an error. And that'll bring up Caitlin Oxley, the pitcher. She squares the bunt and she fouls that back. Oh, and one. Oxley struck out her last time up. Oh, and one here. Francic, Shea Shea, Narcisi at first. That's a nice bunt. Only play is the first, and Francic makes it. Now the Bulldogs got to be careful here. That's a great sacrifice by Oxley. As they put a runner in scoring position for their top RBI getter in Morgan Grubb. Grubb struck out her last time up. Runner at second, no score, one out here. Francis' first offering. And she's going to steal. 
as in with a stolen base is Shea Shea, and that was not sure why the delay to throw the ball down. But there was a about a second, second and a half delay to get the ball down to third base, and it cost them as Narcisi steals third base, and now you got a runner at third with one out and your top RBI person at the plate in Grubb. She's got 26 of them this year, and she swings and misses. So Francis going to have to battle Grubb here. This has to turn in to a one-on-one -on -one battle. Pitch. What a pitch. Got her to strike out the last time with the off speed and gets her to swing and miss for strike two on the off speed. I can't help but think that Jazzy's got to be in her, her head a little bit here with what she's going to wind up and throw her here on strike for a strike. This would be a huge strikeout for Francis with a runner at third and one out. The one-two coming to Grubb. Grubb taking her time getting in. Trying to disrupt the rhythm a little bit here. Gamesmanship between batter and pitcher. Francis winds, kicks, and fires outside, and it's 2-2. Two -two. You see Narcisi on your screen there, standing at third. The 2-2 two -two coming. Strike three. Two outs. Big strikeout from Jazzy Francis. Bailen Gomez, a 343 hitter, 23 RBIs, so or I'm sorry, 10 RBIs, so no slouch at the plate either. Francis can't give up here. And the Bulldogs still going to be aware for her to maybe try to lay one down for a hit here. Strike one. This could go on all afternoon. Francis 0-1. Ooh. 0 and 2. Or 1 and 1, I'm sorry. That's one of those pitches where I can only tell you it missed. I just couldn't tell you where. One and one, two outs here. High and outside. Ball two, two and one. So Jazzy's falling behind. Runner at third with two outs. Two and one to Bailing Gomez. Turner in a couple of steps at third. Alley. The off speed. She was looking for it, but fouls it back to the screen. So the ultimate deuce is wild here with two balls, two strikes, two outs, and one runner standing on third base. What will the dealer, Jazzy Francis, deal up here as the turn card pitch? If it's strike three, it's a big one. If it's ball three, it's a full count. Francic. Strands the runner at third. Strike three looking. And we head to the top of the fifth. The jacket strand a runner at third. Still no score.
chance of getting any better. I was kind of want to play him closer to Melbourne. What's that expression that you always get the hat? You know, yeah. that's a good softball. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody's got to be one. Somebody's got to be two. You know, Caleb and I are talking about the rankings and which one of these teams deserves to be number one. Well, you could argue all day long it's Melbourne. You could argue all day long it's Barto. But obviously, you know, it's supposed to be based on a computer ranking system. But if any of it, any of it is left up to chance and and human humans. Well, you're obviously going to lean towards the eight-time state champ, right? So why wouldn't you as a number one seed? You know they've been there and done it. Bailey Holland steps in. Holland looks at a pitch low and inside for strike one. So at this point, it doesn't really matter which one of these teams is number one. It did this morning at 6 o'clock. <sighs> you know, I can tell you that. Holland swings at ball two there, and the count is one and one. One ball, one strike, nobody out, no score here. Two hits, one by each team in this one. She squares the bunt, misses it, strike two, one and two. The on-deck hitter is Francic. You know, you just feel like one of these power hitters for either team, if they can get the barrel on a fastball, catch up with it, they might be able to, you know, put it out there where that pickup truck brigade is. One and two to Holland. Popped up, straight up. I don't know if it's going to stay in. And it barely goes over the fence as Bailey Holland stays alive. Holland's on it right there. That's a good swing, making good contact. And you hear Coach Dan, uh, Dan Adele telling her, shorten the swing up just a little bit and you're on to something. Strike three, one out. That is number 11 for Oxley. Speaking of 11, 11 steps in. Jazzy, her last time up, struck out. Addie Berry, the on-deck hitter. Oxley to Francic and Jazzy. Strike one swinging. Coach Adele telling him to focus on hip to knee. Hip to knee. Strike two. One run's going to win this game. You just hope it comes for the team in the green if you're back in the 3 2 1. Ooh, same pitch as the 0 1, but that one misses, and it's a ball and two strikes. Strike three, swinging. Two outs with Addie Barry coming up. Barry, a left-hander, and, of course, coming way in at third base now is going to be 
Bailing Gomez. Gomez is nearly sitting at the table with Barry. Oxley's pitch. That's a strike. Oh, and one. Strike two. Once again, coming up later on today, one o'clock. Good luck to the O'Galley Commodores as they take on Tampa Jesuit, the Tigers, in the 5A state championship. They are the first team to make it that far since 2019, looking to be popped up. Shortstop says, I got it. She does. That'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. The song remains the same, as Led Zeppelin once said. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and it's no score between the Jackets and the Bulldogs. Once again, the O'Galley Commodores will take on Tampa Jesuit today at 1 o'clock. That game can be seen on the NFHS Network. That's a paid subscription site, $10.99. But, you know, normally, you know, it's worth it to see the O'Galley Commodores and Bobby Collins go try to win a state championship. And, you know, Brevard County Baseball has had uh, throughout the course of time 18 teams play for a state championship. Ironically enough, the first team to ever play for a state championship was Coco way back. And the FHSAA keeps their records all the way back to the 1920s. Coco played back sometime in the 20s. I think it was 1927. They played for that first state championship. They played in two of them. Never won one. But uh, Brevard County 18 times has played for a state championship, and they've captured it eight Eight times. Rockledge in 04. MCC captured the title in 13 and 19. Merritt Island, of course, went back to back in 99 and 2000. Florida Prep did it uh, twice in the 90s, I believe. They were uh, Florida Error at the time. And, of course, uh, who am I missing? I got Rockledge, MCC. Florida Air, Merritt Island. Oh, the first one to ever do it, Satellite. Satellite was the first Brevard County baseball team to ever win a state championship, and they did that back in 1986 for O'Galley. This is their first trip to the state finals as their trip to the final four was the first time they had reached that point in 39 years. Julia Hedder steps up. Had her struck out her first time up. The pitch. And Francic makes sure she picks up right where she left off. Strike one. No score. Bottom five. Getting deep into this one. And that'll be strike two right there on the outside corner. Melbourne, of course, went to the Final Four back in 2014. The, the uh, softball team, as that pitch is fouled back to the screen. In very much a similar fashion, they played Lakewood Ranch on a Friday. The game got rained out. They were forced to come back on Saturday and ended up beating Lakewood Ranch to advance to the Final Four. Francis 0-2, oh, 1-2 is that one drifts just a little further outside. The on-deck hitter is Crystal Sal. And there's a little nubbler down the first baseline, quick pit, and they got her. Nice job by Barry to turn and flip, and that'll be one out. The umpires in the dugout and stands for Bartow didn't like the call, but or did she not get her? Or did they not? Or did they not get her? She's gonna stay there and wait for Coast to discuss this. See what the call is here. 
She got down that line fast. And she's out. So, header grounds out. I guess they're saying she beat the throw or she was interfered with. I don't know. I couldn't tell from here. So, this is going to bring up Kendall Sal. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Sal struck out her last time up. So Frantic again ahead. Nothing and two. I don't think you, uh, you know, you're you're at seven, eight, nine here. I just think you gotta blow them away at this point. Frantic rocks, kicks, and fires popped up. It's playable and hauled in for the second out here in the bottom of the fifth inning by Arnold. Two outs as Quartermain steps in and two guesses as to what she did her first time up. Strike out. Nothing and no balls, no strikes. Two outs here. Low for ball one. Wasn't that bad of a trip over this morning other than the individual that for some reason hit the guardrail sticking out of the interstate high. Oh, I, I, got a, I got a suspicion as to why. But uh, glad everybody was okay. And Two-minute delay, and we were on our way. 2-0 and oh now. So the first time today, Francis has fallen behind anybody 2-0. She did walk the leadoff hitter in the game, but that was a 1-1-2-2-3-2 situation. And Francis goes 3-2. 3-0. Sorry, 3-0 to... Quartermeyer, the number eight hitter, and we've certainly seen this before, and the result has always been Jazzy will battle back. Let's see if she does it here with Peyton Mathis on deck. As she does not, that's a four-pitch walk, a rarity from Jazzy, and that'll bring up Quartermeyer. Peyton Mathis, I'm sorry, who struck out. I would imagine we can expect to see this young lady traveling the base pass like there's a conveyor belt out there, but you just got to go after the batter here. And Frantic does nothing and one. She actually stays put there. Oh, and one. Swung on, nothing and two, and she started to go, held up. Alicia Thompson quickly out of her stance there. So after a four-pitch walk, Francis quickly ahead of the number nine hitter, nothing and two. Oof. One and two now. One and two, two outs here. Strike three, Francic battles back after the walk to get the strikeout. 
We head to the top of the sixth. Still no score in the 6A3 Regional Championship. So two of the best in the circle in the state. Certainly not disappointing here today. Both now in the double digits with strikeouts. Both have allowed just one hit. And both are mowing down each other's hitters like there is no tomorrow. And, well, let's face it, for one of these teams, there is no tomorrow. As we head to the top of the sixth, for the Melbourne Bulldogs. And Nevaeh Loveridge, who singled down the third base line her first time up, is back up. Nevaeh Loveridge steps up. Pitch. Nevaeh squares the bunt, fouls that straight back. Nice cool breeze blowing right now. Man, do we need it? It is humid. What a nail biter we've got here. Nevaeh. I would imagine she's going to try and slap one or lay one down here. Not a slap hitter, but certainly capable. She squares, pulls it back, and takes a strike. And now she's behind, nothing in two to Oxley. Oxley with a dozen strikeouts in the game. And she is as advertised. Little hop and all. And that'll be just off the plate for a ball, one and two. And the hitters, the issue is not adjusting to that, it's catching up to the fastball. One and two. A hitter, and Loveridge takes a quick stare out at Oxley. She didn't like being hit there at all. And uh, Nevaeh Loveridge will take first. And for the first time or second time in this game, the leadoff hitter is aboard. It happened in the bottom of the first for Bartow when Jazzy Francic walked the first batter of the game. And now, opportunity galore here. I don't know if we get a pinch runner or not here. Nope. Nevea will stay in the run. A left-handed slap hitter, and they play her accordingly. Loveridge way off the bag, and will take a dive back. One and oh, nice bunt, Loveridge. The only play is at first, and now the Bulldogs have a runner at second with one out and the top of the lineup coming up. Now, the top of the lineup has seen Oxley twice. 
The first two hitters, English and Turner, have both struck out twice. Let's see if they can now time this up and step up and make something happen here with Loveridge at second. Oxley rocks and fires high. 1-0. and So Oxley a little out of the strike zone this inning. He called that a strike. How's that a strike? Did she not pull that bat back? Swung on and missed. That's a strike. I think it's 1-1. One, one. Scoreboard will say 0-2. He's there waiting for the umpire, and the scoreboard says 0-2. I'm not, I'm not sure how the first pitch was a strike. Nothing and two here with one out. Just misses off the outside corner. One and two. Loveridge. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there was a little confusion there. And so Nadia may have missed an opportunity to bunt, swung on and missed strike three. And that'll be out number two now. And Allie Turner with two outs here. The best opportunity of the game for the Bulldogs to play the run here. Infield halfway. Oxley. One out away from doing the same thing that Jazzy Francic did just two innings ago. And that's stranding a runner in scoring position. She turns to bunt and bunts it foul. Trying to push home that go-ahead run here in the top of the sixth. I got a feeling we are in for a classic here. A classic finish, no doubt about it. The 0-1 to Alley. Outside, and the count is even at a ball and a strike. Loveridge at second. Kyla Berry would be next. The pitch. Outside, ball two. two and one. Oh, he called that a strike. And Dan Adele wants to know how. One and two now. Inside. Loveridge steals third. Arguing. They wanted to know where the call was. And the Bay of Loveridge wisely. Takes off running for third. What a headsy base running play by Nevaeh Loveridge. And now the umpires are going to talk. She's safe indeed. Nevaeh took advantage. They didn't ask for time. So everything is still alive. And Nevaeh Loveridge with a heady steal. Now all Allie Turner needs to do is just drop one in much easier said than done against Oxley here's the situation two balls two strikes two outs no score Allie Turner at the plate with the Vail Loveridge at third we have seen on two occasions here today Oxley airmail one to the backstop over the catcher's head so Anything can happen here. But what a heads up play by give me the pitch. Swung on and miss. And Oxley takes a glance over at Nevaeh Loveridge as she walks off. 
that'll end the inning with the runner stranded at third. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Scoreless here in Bartow. All right, we head to the bottom of the sixth here, and it's going to be the top of the lineup for Bartow as Mackenzie Gibson steps in. McGibson, McGibson, Gibson has walked and struck out here today. Allie Turner, four or five steps in at third. Alyssa Arnold even with the bag at first. And she runs the slap. It doesn't swing. And nothing and one from Jazzy, who has been brilliant here today. Question is, when is she not? And that is pushed foul for strike two. So Francis quickly has the leadoff hitter. Down in the count, nothing and two with Shea Narcisse on deck. And the last time she was up, she reached third on an infield hit. The pitch from Jazzy. <laughs> One and two. <laughs> One ball and two strikes now. Strike three, one out. Shea Shea Narcy steps in. With Oxley on deck. As Narcisse swings and fouls it straight back for strike one. Each team with one hit, both pitchers with double-digit strikeouts. In the 6A3 region championship, the winner off to Claremont and the 6A final four. Brevard looking to send a team back for the second consecutive year. Strike two, Jassy's dealing. Nothing and two here with one out. Jassy throws the ball into her glove. The 0-2 as Narcisse stays alive. We'll do it all over again here.
The off-speed gets her. Strike three. Two outs. As Caitlin Oxley steps in, or as they call her here at Bartow, Red. She looks down at third base, and coach says, it's your game, girl. Help your calls. Launch one to those pickup trucks, and you only got three outs to go, and Francic has other ideas here. As Red fouls this one back on top of the press box. Go ahead. If you want to look, just don't miss anything. Oh, and one. Francic has been 0-1 or better to every hitter this inning. And if ever you're going to do that, it's this part of the lineup and this time of the game you want to be there. Nothing and one to Oxley. And it's quickly nothing and two. Now Oxley's got to be wondering what's coming. Is she going to throw me heat or is she going to take a little something off and try and pull the string on me? Let's see what Jazzy dances up to the plate. Pitcher to pitcher. Ooh. I don't think you could put that any better than what Jazzy just, that's been a strike all day long. Just off the outside portion, I can imagine, for ball one. One and two from Francic. Popped up, but foul. Now, Oxley's got a good feel on that. She got around on that, but she hit it off the barrel or the top of the bat. So it's one and two now with two outs. Frantic to her counterpart, Oxley. The one, two. And Oxley gets a piece of that, and we do it all over again. Reminds me of last year in the regional championship game when Jace Jackson was up for Vieira. And just had a battle with a pitcher. Still one and two. Francic winds, kicks, fires. Got another piece. She's making Barry Gibb proud here. Staying alive. One and two. Big at bat here for both teams. The one, two. Strike three. Jazzy wins the battle. We go to the seventh. No score. Well, the Bulldogs, it's not sudden death yet. Well, if you stop and think about it, a run, a run here likely, likely wins you a regional championship if you're Melbourne. So 
Dan Adele looked at me in the dugout. What did he say, Caleb? We're going to score. We're going to score right here as it's Kyla Berry, Alicia Thompson. And we'll see if any pinch hitters come up. Bailey Holland scheduled to hit as well. Still got Sophia Valcourt available. That's a big bat to have available. No. No. <laughs> All right, Kyla Berry steps in. And remember, yesterday, Berry was able to get into a fastball. I've seen Kyla hit him before. Yard over fences. She tries to slap it one here, and it's strike one. Kyla says, my fault. The James Madison University commit. Looking to extend her high school softball career here today. Outside, ball one, one and one. Got a lot of college commits on this team. You got Allie Turner going to Belmont. Nevaeh Loveridge going to Kaiser. Sophia Valcourt going to FAMU. They will all play softball at their respective colleges. Alicia Thompson on deck. She leads the team with nine home runs. The pitch. Barry down the first baseline. And you, that's right. That's how you do it. Kyla. And, and the manager comes out, and he looks over at – she's right in the base path. And uh, umpires aren't going to do anything about that. They're going to talk to each other as Kintai's got the ear. And Kyla Berry just ran into her as the – Look, the first baseman's got about 50 pounds on Kyla, to be honest with you, okay? Kyla stood her ground. She picked the ball up in the base path. I, you know, I don't know what the rule is there. I guess you're supposed to miss it as Bartow is high-fiving each other as if they just sacked the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, look. It's a competitive game. I like it. I said before the game, you know what? These teams, this one right here, similar to O'Galley, they play this sport with the mentality of teams that play contact sports. I don't have any problem with this. Just stay within the rules, and let's move on to the next batter. I'm not sure what Bartos coach is upset about, but Adele wasn't upset. The players were pumped up. Let's go. One out here. Thompson swung on and missed. Now, that he called a strike, and Jazzy looked at two of those for balls last inning, so the inconsistency is... I don't know. Questionable here on that zone. Low for a ball. One and two. And, you know, and to be fair to these guys, we had different umpires yesterday. They probably had no idea. But, I mean, your job is your job, right? One and two. Pitch. Foul tip hung on by the catcher. Strike three out two as Bailey Holland steps in. Will we play extra innings? Will Melbourne hold? Barto scoreless in the bottom of the seventh. Or can Bailey Holland pop one out of here? She turns the bunt and fouls it straight back. Nothing and one.
Nothing and one with two outs here. The pitch. And there, there's what we were talking about a little earlier. She actually got that one over the catcher's head and back to the screen. Barto, Oxley, nice bunt by Holland, the throw down to first, and that's the third and final out in the top of the seventh. It is sudden death now, as Barto needs just one to advance. We head to the bottom of the seventh, no score between the Dogs and the Jackets. Welcome back here on the Brevard Sports Network as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Two of the best there is in the state. And just so everybody knows here so where, we're, where we're coming from. And I happen to notice a comment out there. What did it say? Standard what? Standard biased opinion from the opposition. Well, it is called Brevard Sports Network for a reason. Just saying. But I think we've done a pretty good job today. And, you know, we made the two-hour drive over, right? Twice. <laughs> I think we've given Bartow their due. Eight-time state champ. Baseball, what do we call them? A baseball, Florida baseball powerhouse. They have been in the state of Florida for, you know, you go back to 1986, they keep their records on the wall. Since 1986, this program has had a double-digit losing season twice since 1986, and in both of those seasons, it was just 10 losses. As the Jackets come to the plate, swinging the bat here as the number four hitter. It'll be four, five, and six. Morgan Grubb, Bailing Gomez, and Julia Hader. Hader. Jazzy Francic and Caitlin Oxley have both been as advertised here today. The pitch popped up and out of play. And Francic gets ahead. What are you going to do? Nothing and two. The 0-2 outside good waste pitch here. You don't want to, you know, I mean, you could try and blow it by her, but she knows it's coming, right? So you put one outside, and then you give her a little something to think about. I mean, Jazzy's got her a couple of times today on the breaking pitch. Struck her out on it earlier, uh, and the first time up as well. So does she pull the string here or just try and blow it by her? About chest high. Let's see here. Francic, the one-two. And she took a little off of that, but Grubb was ready for it that time. Mm -hmm. 
one and two. Here to Grub, a run will win it for Bartow. That's why you get the number one seed. This is the exact reason why you do it. The pitch. That right there was strike three called ball two. So Grubb lives to swing another day here. Pitch. English up and over to first, got her. Sophia Valcourt has come on to play first as Nadia English ate it up and throws her out. For the first out in the bottom of the seventh. Hey, way to be, Tooth. Good job. Good job, Tooth. It only takes one now. Balin Gomez steps in. And I can sit here and tell you what these batters have done for the entire game, but each team has one hit, and everybody in the lineup, with the exception of one batter, and both lineups have struck out. And that batter, I believe, is Peyton Mathis, the number nine hitter on this team. That is strike one. Oh, and one. Pitch. Gomez looks at ball one, high and outside, one and one. Eight-time state champ, one-time national champ is Bartow. Melbourne looking to spoil the party this year. Here's the pitch from Francic, the 1-1. Make it 1-2. I don't know who Bartow has beyond Oxley, but obviously uh, beyond Francic is Kyla Berry. The one-two fouled back to the screen by Gomez. The on-deck hitter is Julia Hedder. One and two. You knew you were going to see a classic. You could see this coming all year long between these two teams. The one-two. Outside, and Francic makes it 2-2. And I like the strategy by Bartow here. Take a pitch, take a couple of pitches, make her work deeper into counts. That's smart play. Smart. Especially the later we get on here. 2-2 two and two from Jazzy. Foul tip, hung on to... By Thompson for strike three and out number two. Julia Heater steps in. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Still no score between the top two teams in 6A. Popped up, right field. Turner calls it, hauls it, out number three. And we have extra innings here in Bartow. We have played seven for the 6A3 Regional Championship. No score between the Yellow Jackets and the Bulldogs. A classic unfolding here. And Melbourne has been in this situation 
two other times this year. Earlier this year, you'll remember they did this against Lake Brantley and won the game. Melbourne gets a run here. They'll have to get three outs. Obviously, if Barto scores, that's it. As they're going to come out here after seven and re-rake and settle in that whole area of the pitcher's mound. I don't know if my nerves can handle this. After all the baseball and softball we've done over the last two weeks and the barn burners we've had to do, my goodness. But, what, you know, I don't think we'd have it any other way. I mean, yeah, I mean, would you like to see somebody up? Sure. But if you're going to drive two hours twice to do a softball game, you might as well get a little extra out of it. Oxley. All right, after having faced the sophomore sensation three times, let's see if they can make any adjustments at all here. Coming back around, and Sophia Valcourt will get her first cuts at Caitlin today as Jazzy Francis steps in. Jazzy with a, a golden opportunity to help her cause. And there you go. Okay. Now we got same call there. One and oh. So that time he calls it a ball. So good job on pitch. There's a strike. That was a little closer that time. That was a strike. One and one. See, I show him a little love when. had some conversations with some heads of some bike crews before. We can be a little hard on them at times, but pitch inside for a ball, two and one to Jazzy. They're a little hard on me, too, sometimes. If Ed Dufresne is watching, Eddie Dufresne can vouch for that. Two and one. That's a strike. Yes, indeed. Two and two. Two and two. That misses three and two. And, and you know what? Melbourne's doing the same thing that Barto did last inning, making her pitch. Make, take these pitches. Take them. You know what? Swing the bat when you got two strikes. Now, this is the payoff. The problem is both these pitchers throw strikes 99% of the time on the payoff pitch, as you just saw there. <laughs> so, I mean, that strategy is only going to carry so far when you got pitching this good. Sophia Valcourt steps in for her first at bat today. Oxley, Valcourt, Valcourt swung on and missed. That was a little high. And that's what uh, Coach Adele is telling her. Elbows to hips there, elbows to hips. 0 oh, and 1 to Sophia. Nevaeh Loveridge, who's. That's a strike indeed at the knees, 0 oh, and 2. Nevaeh Loveridge is on deck. If you had to pick a player of the game other than these pitchers, for, you know, I, I like Loveridge. Ooh, yeah, that was a little low. Good job by the catcher there to frame it, though. And it's 1 and 2. Good call by the ump. One and two here with one out to Valcourt. 
The pitch. She, good job by Sophia there. She swung at that pitch to start the at-bat. Lays off of it, and it's two and two. Strike three, two outs. Nevaeh steps up. Nevaeh's got a single today. And a stolen base. Hit by a pitch her last time up. Nevaeh looks at ball one inside. Haley Turner would be next. Oxley, that's a strike, one and one. How long, and I don't know, because my, my girl didn't play, my daughter didn't play softball, but how long can these girls go at this pace? You know what I mean? How many innings can they throw sitting batters down like this? I'm curious. I, I, don't, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. So if anybody does, let me know. Two and one to Nevaeh. Three and one now to Nevaeh. And you may be starting to see it a little bit. You know, Jazzy went a little deeper in counts in the last inning, and here you're 3-1 to Nevaeh. Three balls and a strike to Loveridge. Three and two now. You got to think, should it get past? I'll tell you after this. Strike three, absolutely. Nevaeh doesn't like it, but that was there. That'll take us to the bottom of the eighth inning, and we are still scoreless. You got to think that with Kyla Berry in the wings, I don't know who their second pitcher is, but, you know, you replaced Francic with Barry, and you're keeping the same type of pitcher out there with a fresher arm. I don't know if Bartow can do the same. And, again, I don't know. I know they had a pitcher against Vieira the other night, give up two runs. So, I, I mean, again, how long can these two go? Because right now, none of them show any signs of slowing down. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Bartow is one run away from a Final Four appearance here. At a distance, the Bartow manager looks a little like Coach Thomas from Rockledge, doesn't he? I thought, I thought I was like, Coach Thomas, yeah, you get managing Bartow and Rockledge this year, are you? But he does, doesn't he? <laughs> Coach Scott Thomas, of course, with a great job again this year for the Raiders. Another district championship, three in a row for them. Of course, it's about the job by Alex and Joe Breeden at Vieira. Again, Brevard is in good hands with their softball managers for sure. All right, here we go. Kendall Sal steps in. Uh, against Jazzy. Valcourt. Holland, English, and Turner with Thompson behind the plate. That's first to third. Barry Loveridge and Turner in the outfield. Francis. 
first pitch offering to Sal is strike one here in the bottom of the eighth. And this is it. This is it for us. Our final high school broadcast of the season. We'll be back in August. We got high school spring football next week, but that's not regular season stuff. We'll say thank you, Caleb, on another fine job this year as we broadcast between softball and baseball 30 different telecasts. One ball, one strike, Francis fouled straight back, and she's ahead of Sal, one and two. I think what I'm going to do here at the top half of this inning is I'm going to turn it over to Caleb. Let Caleb call the top half. I'm thinking positively here for Brevard, the top half of the ninth coming up. I'm going to take a half-inning break here. The pitch fouled back and out of play. And the count will remain at a ball and two strikes to Sal. A one, two. Oh, my, down the line. And a leadoff base hit by Kendall Sal. She was all over that one, two fastball. And Barto has the regional championship run aboard. I can only think it's going to be a bunt fest from here. As Quartermeyer steps in, Quartermain steps in. And there it is. Oh, they got, oh, they had her at second if they wanted her. Oh, they, oh, I thought they got her stepping off the bag. And I thought they did. They got to ask for help here. I thought her foot was off the bag. I thought they had her. It looked like she came off the bag and the tag was applied as Adele wants time. And he's going to make them ask for help. I don't know if they're going to overturn the call. That's a huge call to overturn. But I see the argument because she came off the bag. The tag was there. She was out. She takes a deep breath. Frantic had her if she wanted her. We're going to get a pinch runner here. Because the bunt. And they're gonna, he's going to ask. So the regional championship run is at second base. And they say safe. Okay. All right. That's the call. See, pinch runner is going to be number 20. Brisbane, it looks like. I don't have a 20 on my roster with Brisbane. That's what the lineup card says. All right. Peyton Mathis steps in. The only player not to strike out in this game is at the dish. And no, nobody covering second base. And they had her dead to rights there at second base. She came way too far down the line. And that's the second time they had a shot at that runner at second base. Keep that in mind. Bottom of the eighth, one out, winning run at second. What a bunt. They got to make the play. Turner throws, got it. 
and Melbourne cannot get in to throw the ball around the infield fest here. But the regional championship run is at third base. With two outs, second time in the game that Bartow has had a runner at third. A base hit wins it. And it's up to a pinch hitter, don't we? Pitch. Not sure where that missed. One and O oh to the pinch here. I can't see her number. I didn't hear her announced in. So the one O. Oh. Two and O. Oh. Is this still quarter bait? Nope. This is a pinch hitter. Okay. Two and O. Oh. Here's the pitch. Three and O. Oh. 16. Coach, they announced a pinch hitter in. Pitch. That's a strike. Three and one. Three and two now. Francic has battled all the way back here. Three balls, two strikes, you're 18. It is Riley Owens. So Riley Owens has three balls, two strikes, two outs. The winning run is at third base. Jazzy Francic with the top. This, uh, strike three, Francic gets the Bulldogs out of it. And we go to the top of the ninth. Still no score. You got this? Warren McKee, the runner there on second, or the runner on second, stole third. And then Jazzy got the strikeout to shut down that inning. Wow. We head to the top of the ninth. And same pitcher still staying in.
Haley Turner now up to bat. Here in the top of the ninth. Oxley, the first pitch, and that's going to be a pop-up bunt, and that it'll be dropped. So the pitcher and the catcher collided. The, the, the catcher had that pop-up bunt caught, and she was unfortunately knocked out by her own pitcher. But now we're getting clarification from the from the umpire. It's a it's a foul ball, and uh, we're going to turn our camera away. Sitting with her. It was just an, an unfortunate collision here. A little uh, miscommunication. And she, and she is standing up on her own power, and 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 she's she's taking the gear back. That's just, that's just competitive drive there. She doesn't want to come out of this game. Mackenzie Gibson and Gibson showing showing just how tough she is. So so for those of you who are asking what happened, uh, there was a pop up bunt. Gibson went for the grab and her pitcher came in and accidentally ran into her. So here we go, 0-1, and Turner, Turner gets hit in the elbow with that pitch, but in the midst of a bunt. And so, because it hit her, because it hit her, she's going to take first. So, Haley Turner up. On first. Nadia English coming up to bat. Top of the lineup, and there's another bunt. This one by English. Over to first, and she's out, but that advances Haley Turner to second. So a nice job, nice bunt there by Nadia English, advancing Turner to second. And Allie Turner comes up to bat here with one out here in the top of the ninth.
And Turner squares to bunt, pulls that one back for ball one. Squares again to bunt, fouls that one back, and that'll be count as one and one. Count is one and one, one out. Haley Turner on second. Square Savant pulls it back and the umpire, wow. The, the, the umpire called strike two. who is the only player on both teams to lift one out of the infield. And they're going to walk Kyla. We good? All right. That's their computer. Oh. Kyla... Barry is intentionally walked. And that's going to bring up. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better situation if you were the Melbourne Bulldogs right now. Bases loaded, one out. Your number four hitter, your best hitter all year at the plate. Nine home runs, but all she needs to do, she bunts. Safe, the Bulldogs have scored a run on a bases loaded bunt. The Bulldogs have taken a one nothing lead. Bases still loaded. Alicia Thompson bunts. And the infield is still in as Bailey Holland steps in. Barry at second, Turner at third, Thompson at first, Camden Hurd comes on to pinch run. An RBI bunt single for Alicia Thompson, the power hitter with nine home runs this year, bunts home a run. And the Bulldogs have executed this inning on the base. It gets away, or if she foul tips it. The Bulldogs have executed this inning flawlessly on the base paths. It 
one nothing top nine. Zero and one to Bailey Holland. Bases are loaded with Bulldogs. Alicia Thompson lays down the perfect bunt. The pitch, that one's going to be popped up, and they better be careful as that'll be two outs now as Jazzy Francic comes in. So the pop-out bunt. Bases loaded, two outs, but the Bulldogs have the all-important one run in. Jazzy with a chance to certainly help her calls here. She squares the bunt, pulls it back, one and zero. Oh. Gets away. Here comes Allie Turner with the second Bulldog run. The wild pitch pass ball, and Oxley is holding her knee, and the Bulldogs lead it two to nothing. Again, the base running for the Bulldogs. The difference, Allie Turner goes halfway and then all the way when the ball gets past the catcher. Two big runs here in the top of the ninth. Here comes the manager out. I, I, pitcher's hurt. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a pitching change here. Oxley certainly has had a gutsy performance here today. Right now, eight and two-thirds with 17 strikeouts. Yeah, I, I, I can't see any way she can pitch. And the Jackets will likely have a new pitcher coming in. Two in, in the inning. You got the block. As Oxley going to gut it out. Okay. Caitlin Oxley going to gut it out. But if I'm Jazzy Frantic, I'm just, I can't see with the way she's, Limping out there, how she's going to have anything on that fastball coming in. If I'm frantic, I don't know that I'm bunting. I think I might be looking to take one for a ride here. The pass ball, wild pitch, whatever you want to call it, scores the second bulldog run of the inning. And it's two to nothing here in the top of the ninth. This is exactly as Francis squares the bunt. That she doesn't quite get it back in time. And it's two and two. What's wrong? Two ball. Actually, it's two and one. She slaps at that one. Now it's two, two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. I think Jazzy may be already out there thinking in her mind, I just want to get back out there in the circle and go get three outs and get home regional champs the bulldogs have overcome so much strike three we go to the bottom of the ninth but not before the melbourne bulldogs score two runs they get just one hit to do it we go to the bottom of the ninth the melbourne bulldogs are three outs away from a 6a3 regional championship And Francis going to have to go through the heart of the order to do it. She's done it all day. 
There is no doubt about that. She has done it all day long. A stunned silence from the home team crowd here as Francic takes her warm-up tosses. Alicia Thompson with the big bunt. The heads-up base running there by Allie Turner, both to get the second on the, you know, the walk to try to force a Bartow throw. Then you get second and third. They walk Kyla Berry, and Thompson lays down the bunt. Here we go. Shea Shea Narcisse steps in. Narcisse. If ever Barto needed a couple of runs, it was now. Jazzy Francic looking to shut it down here. Francic on the rubber. First pitch offering to Narcisse is a strike. 0 and 1. Nothing and 1. 2 to nothing. Melbourne on top here in the bottom of inning number 9. The pitch. Strike 2 from Francic. Oh, and two now. The on-deck hitter is the pitcher, Caitlin Oxley. The 0-2 fouled straight back as Shea Shea Narcisse stays alive here. Nothing but donuts on the board through eight. And Melbourne with an outstanding ninth. Best base running all year I've seen. The pitch from Francic. Oh, my, a little soft liner down the left field line. And that's a leadoff single. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's a leadoff single. That run don't hurt you. This one at the plate does. Would, would, would this game be any other way? Any other way? Honestly. That, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Danny, the wild man, Adele. Popped up. This is playable. Playable. Caught. One out. Sorry. One out. First pitch swinging was Oxley, and this brings up Morgan Grubb. Check the sound. I pulled the cord. Okay. One out. One on. And again, if you're Bartow right now, if you're down to your final at bat, you don't want anybody else at bat other than Grubb, your power hitter. Francic. One and O oh to Grubb. Francic. Nothing phases this young lady. Rocks, winds. There's a chopper back to Jazzy. To second for one. On to first. Double play! And the Melbourne Bulldogs are region champs! The Melbourne Bulldogs have captured the regional championship on a one, six, three, double play. Oh, yeah. 
What a game. Nice double play. Nice double play. And the Melbourne Bulldogs have come over not once, but twice. And they will advance to Claremont for the 6A Final Four. The Bay of Loveridge. There they are, happy bunch of girls right there. Jazzy Francic, outstanding performance. Hey, coach. Coach, before you, coaches, coaches, hold on. Before you go talk to the girls real quick, the decision to bunt with the base is loaded. Like, come on. We had talked about this, and we knew that we had them on the ropes. We just had to put the ball in play. And I trust my girls, the whole coaching staff, with everything we've been through this year. We believed in them, and I knew if we could just put that ball in play, even with bases loaded, that we would come through. You would do it. All right, we'll catch you guys here in a minute. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That, you know, what what a call. Button with the bases loaded. And that certainly makes that car ride back a whole lot sweeter. As the Melbourne Bulldogs are your 6A3 region champions. You send me that, right? I know I got you. Yeah, I know. I appreciate you. And did you see how many people were looking? I did. It was crazy. My daughter kept texting me. 259, mom. 266, mom. I'm watching. Crazy. <laughs> so the Bulldogs, with three hits in the game, two runs, incredible base running, great coaching here today, and they are. Go ahead and plug that up, yeah. That is the stuff that uh, memories are certainly made of. I uh, no, 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 no. Just gonna stay right here live and talk to them, and I'll pull the interviews out of uh, pull the interviews out of the live like I did last week, or you will. <laughs> here, you can take this though. As we wait for the girls to come, and I want to talk to a bunch of them, of course. Coach from Bartow, a class act over here, talking to the girls. Just a class act here. And he's telling them, you're the best team in the state. Those were, in my opinion, right there. I felt like, and I didn't want to say it coming in, but I felt like that the team that won this game will go on to win the state champ. I just felt like that. And I think this team, and I've said it all year, all year long, that if any team had a chance in baseball or softball to win a state championship, it was this group of girls. Last year, that loss in the regional semis to Vieira, we asked at the beginning of this postseason what it was they learned as a group from that. Well, what they learned was that you just can't give up under any circumstances. And then obviously what they had to endure this year with Coach Shepard and how that went down. And, you know, everything changed for them in the final month of the season. And they consciously made a decision as a team that none of that was going to be a distraction for them. And they went out and they did exactly what they set out to do this year. And that was to get to this point. And for the second time since 2014, the Melbourne Bulldogs softball team will return to the FHSAA Final Four. As they get a 2-0 victory. And how appropriate they end it on a 4 or on a 1-6-3 double play. And I think I couldn't believe that the batter in the box wasn't run. She was quarter of the way out of the box. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go, Bulldogs. Let's 
the dog out. There you go. There's the parents. I know they're happy. Melbourne comes all the way over to Bartow, not once, but twice, and gets the win. Jazzy. Go ahead, get them and get their pictures. I think they're going to take some pictures here. Oh. A3 regional champs. Let me get uh, you and you real quick, real fast, uh, and then I'll get I'll get some of the seniors here. But I got to talk to the two of you because now you got to talk loud for me, okay? Because I don't have a microphone hooked up. I'm here with Alicia Thompson and Jazzy Francis. First of all, congratulations. First question I'm going to ask you: Miss nine, ten home runs this year, button with the bases loaded. You get the signal to do that, you lay a butte down. Take us through that. I don't know. I wasn't on that day exactly. I was going to go for a lot, and I just needed to run it down, watch the ball, and run. That was it. I got to do it to the team sometimes, you know. And that was certainly what, what it was there, no doubt. Jazzy, much was made of this matchup today. Two best sophomores in the state of Florida out there dueling it out. You win. You out her today on her mound, bunny hopping and all. Uh, take me through this performance by you against a team like that? Well, I knew I have my seniors that I need to win for. I have this girl over here that I need to win for. Uh, we all needed to win together. We played together. It didn't matter who we were facing. We all wanted to win. Ladies, I'll let you get back to your final question. When that, what, what, what was the biggest lesson you took from last year being this good and bringing it into this year? Because this was a different team edge-wise this year. You carried a little edge about you. What was it? Gotcha. Just sticking, knowing what we can do in these getting it, getting it done. Ladies, go celebrate, no doubt. And Miss Allie, here with Senior Allie Turner and Allie. I mean, it can't be more of a unbelievable whirlwind of a three-day stretch for you and, and the other seniors on this team. Uh, the base running, outstanding base running. You started it. You get the walk. You take second. You you force them to make a play they couldn't make. And then the wheels come off of their apple cart. Take us through that inning and the emotions. So I was just, I was looking to just hit the top of the ball somehow, but I was, had all my three prior at bats, like she kept pitching rises. So I was laying off the rise and then the low balls that were coming in and dropping. So I was just starting my swing really early and then was able to like watch it rise. And then I walked to second and I realized it was a pass ball. So Haley was running to third and then I was like, Okay, I'm just gonna start something. There's one out, like it would get me here so she can score. So I did like a sort of like jog delay. Like, yeah, jog. it was beautiful. And then they ended up not getting me out. So then I just stayed there and got all hype until. So 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 you thought you were done at the high school, right? Uh, take us to to round out your career, your high school career. Uh, you're going to Claremont. You're going to Belmont in college. There's a lot of a lot of Monts here. You gotta be one happy camper right now. Oh, I am. I'm so proud of this team, and I knew Jackie 
Jazzy is going to come out here and throw heat and throw gas. And as long as we could manufacture just one or two runs, we knew we were going to hold them and win that game. And we were like, we were very proud You've of You've done this this year. This is not the first time you played a team this good and did this to beat them, is it? No, we played Lake Brantley actually, like earlier in the season. We went to, I think, the 12th inning, and we man or I, uh, I managed to square around and hit a single, and then Alyssa Arnold was able to manufacture a bunt, and then end up scoring me off of just a simple Come on in. <laughs> Nevaeh, um, come on in, Kyle. Uh, yeah, come on in. Uh, ladies, stay in here, Allie. Uh, Nevaeh, you really had the game before the game. I mean, you had a really good game here today. Uh, out here, uh, you know, just getting the team pumped up. Come on in here. What does it mean, and I, and I will ask all of you this as seniors on this team, to be able to do what you did here today against that team? Well, you know, I really prepared myself. I wasn't really in my head. I, like, watched film and the stats and everything, so I, like, knew what was going on, and I knew what she was going to throw, you know. Towed up the line, so she would feed me the inside pitch, and I backed up, and then I got the inside pitch, and Went down the line and then she hit me and then she <laughs> caved me. Yeah, a little, little trash talking there between a little, a little bit. You ran over the first baseman, got things going a little bit. Um, man, I, I know there, there was a lot of torn decisions, whether you know, what, with graduation and all. But now that it's all over, with take us through your range of emotions. Um, definitely yesterday I was a little upset, like, considering that we didn't play. Right. Um, but. Honestly, I would have done this yesterday. I would have done this today. Skip anything to my team. So. Got you. Sophia, the turn at the end. You catch the last out. The one, six, three double play. Take us through those range of emotions. Um, as soon as she hit the ball, I mean, I just kind of, I, I saw it go to Jazz. I was like, yeah, we got that. Nadia was there. We got the out. We turned the double play. I mean, it was such a great feeling because at that point we knew we had it in the bag. So, I mean. Just, just that feeling. So as soon as I caught it, I threw my glove up. I threw my ball up. I threw everything up because I was like, I, we had it. Senior season's not over. You all thought you were done down on Babcock Street, right? Right? No, right? Congratulations, ladies. All right, we get set to wrap it up here. Go celebrate with your teammates. We are heading back to Melbourne for the fourth time. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up. What a win here today for the Melbourne Bulldogs softball team as they celebrate with uh, their parents and fellow teammates. They will advance. Come here. I got pooped on. They said it was good luck. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. So we will. Uh, we're heading back. I got two per two percent. So you better come. All right. Let's go. I got 2% left here. Nadia English, the junior, um, start the double play. Were you shocked when you looked and saw she was a quarter of the way down the double down the line? I mean, really, when I do double plays, I focus on the ball because the runner will come in and try to hit you, and I just got to get out, focus on the ball. You know, this is something you ladies for two years now have battled for. How does it feel to finally get to this point? I feel good. Just sportsmanship is a, goes a long way when playing in the game. Playing as a team together really helps in these types of situations. All right, look, she got the better of this lineup today for eight innings. I know how much pride you and a lot of these players take in those swings. She's one of the best pitchers in the state of Florida out there today. What did you keep telling yourselves not to get down? Um, I just say focus, do it for the team, do it for myself, and just get the ball, make something happen. All right, Nadia, go celebrate. All right, the Melbourne Bulldogs will head to Claremont next week as uh, 6A3 region champs as they score two in the top of the ninth to get the 2 nothing victory over the top team in 6A. For Caleb Brown, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. Once again, your final score, Melbourne 2, Bartow nothing. On to the state championships, final four.